I looked in one of my old Bibles. It was a Bible my wife bought for me in 1979. It was my first preaching Bible. I still use a wide margin Bible if anybody's interested. Knowing what kind of Bible. So you can write in the margin. My eyes were better in those days. I almost about as small as Ron. I could tiny print. And I could actually read it as well. But, but I, I looked in my old Bible and I remember this passage of Scripture having a real impact on my life because I was the excuse guy when God was kind of leading me to ministry. Knowing that I did not like to talk in public, knowing that I would not do an oral book report, and obviously thinking all the other reasons why I was not gifted or talented or whatever enough to be a preacher. And so I put over my, like the title or the theme or the punch of that message that morning. It was in 1980 sometime. Here am I, send somebody else. And I think a lot of us get to that threshold of here am I in an emotional service or when God's really got your attention, like a burning bush moment, and you're just ready. And then you get to thinking about it and you think, it ain't no way I'm doing this. So that's kind of third chapter, fourth chapter of Exodus. D.L. Moody said this about Moses. And, and you can divide Moses' life into years, 40 years, 40 years, and 40 years. And I think he might have lived longer, but he did that goofy thing with hitting a rock, and he ended up checking out before they went to the promised land. So you got 40, 40, 40. D.O. Moody said the first 40 was Moses thinking he was somebody. The second 40, he found out he was nobody. And in the last 40, he found out that God can use nobodies. That's pretty good. So for 40 years, when you get to Exodus chapter 3 and you find him on the backside of the desert doing his thing with the sheep, he'd been doing that for 40 years. And when he kind of kind of left into obscurity Israel and Egypt and he's working for his father-in-law and he's got a family now and he, no doubt he's comfortable. A lot of writers think maybe he thought he was a flop or a failure because he knows Acts brings this out in Stephen's message and other passages of Scripture that at 40 he was almost ready to go, ready to just to smack Pharaoh in the face and get Israel's people out. But I promise you at 80... Everything has changed. Maybe he's much wiser, but he's still human. Another factor I, I want you to take out of the equation of what we're talking about this morning, not everybody is going to be asked to lead two million people out of Egypt through the desert. I don't even know if I'd want that calling or that opportunity. There's been several opportunities that the Lord's allowed into my life that I would have never, ever chosen at all. I remember in between, uh, when I was teaching at the Bible college, I just knew that the Lord didn't want me there anymore, and I, I just knew I needed to bow out before the next school year because I didn't want to go into the school year and then say, I'm leaving. I didn't think that was ethical. So in the spring, I went ahead and told the college, I won't be here next year. And they said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of leaving that in the Lord's hands. And so from about May, end of May, till about August, some point, I laid sewer pipe. <laughs> I promise you, that was not on my agenda. I just felt like the Lord would just keep me preaching and keep me doing different things. And so for about six weeks, I laid sewer pipe. Hey, it paid the bills. I don't know that Moses would have ever thought 40 years in Pharaoh's house in 40 years backside of the desert was training for what he was about to do the next 40. Don't underestimate what God's doing in your life right where you are. I can tell you, when I laid that sewer pipe, it humbled this prideful preacher. I'd lay sewer pipe from about 6 in the morning, about 6.30, come home, and Wanda would make me strip at the back door because I was nasty. I wasn't bringing that mess in her house. But it reminded me, <laughs> the end of the day, best day, good day, I'm a nobody that gets to serve him. It doesn't really make any difference if I'm up dressed up in a suit and tie preaching to the church or laying sewer pipe. It just don't make any difference. Now, I'd rather do this. 
But I learned through those moments. I don't know that Moses ever factored that in. Somehow these 40 years on the backside of the desert is preparing me for that great ministry of leading people. I don't know if that ever crossed his mind. I have no idea. What's crossing your mind? Also, don't look at Moses, like I said, leading this, this huge... I mean, he's like, like, he's like a big name in the Old Testament. If you were like the top ten in the Old Testament, I don't know who you'd put top of the list. Maybe Abraham. Maybe Adam, because it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Adam, right? Besides God. But I don't know who the top ten would be. Moses would get in there. I don't know that we'll ever be like front page. But listen to me. A lot of moms miss out on being a godly mom because they just don't think they can. There's no little job. There's no little small opportunity to invest your life in things of eternal. Like a mentoring program. It just doesn't make any difference. It doesn't have to be this big thing, front page, Old Testament Moses. It can just be a godly mom that stays at home with her kids and tries to navigate everything that she does laced with eternity, laced with the gospel. That's just as big, just as important, and just as daunting. And you still don't have enough to do it. You've heard me say this over and over. I don't care what hat I wear. If, if it's grandfather hat, if it's father hat, if it's husband hat, if it's preacher man hat, none of them am I qualified. None of them am I adequate. All of them. I might be two loaves. Maybe half a fish. But you see, it does not matter who I am. It matters who he is. Is. And he does not need you, but he wants you. That's why I mentioned on Wednesday night, we went through, or we just got started into Psalm 78, the most powerful set of lips in a young man's life or a young girl's life is mama's and daddy's lips that are being used for God in a home. When my mom passes away, and I've probably said this before, and I've had preachers invest in me, I've had friends invest in me, peers invest in me, but nobody invested in me like my mama. Don't you ever underestimate the opportunity you get to have. So don't, don't, don't pigeonhole this call, this opportunity, this command. God wants everybody in this room to be involved on a daily basis in some plan he's got. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let me give you two little things before we look at two other little things. And then three other little things. You're thinking, that sounds forever, but we'll get through it. Number one, in this passage, it reminds us that the Lord, and I mean, this, this is about as clichéic as you can get when it comes to spiritual things. The Lord has a plan. I mean, if you, if you take just this story and you put all the pieces in here, the fact that God was working about his birth, he could have died at birth, but he didn't. And you know the story? Raised in Egypt, nursed by his mama. Only God does that. God's always working in your backstory, not just his. Whether you see it, whether you understand it, whether you like it, it makes no difference. God is patient. Forty years in Pharaoh's house. Forty years. That's 80 years. 80 years. Man, that's, that's time to live and die. 80 years. He was molding and planning and waiting. And then the clock ticked. And it's, okay, I'm going to get my people out of Egypt, and my man is over on the back side of the desert. Let's light up a bush, because i got to get his attention. God's always working. He's always got a plan. And remember, he knows all the details. Let me give you another thing to think about. The importance of this opportunity, 
and your response. Now, obviously, God's going to get his people out of Egypt whether Moses does it or not. It's almost like when uh, Mordecai looked at Esther and kind of gave Esther, you know, the, kind of the ultimatum, you know. You know, for such a time as this, if you don't do something, God's, God's going to take care of his people and he wants to use you. But if you don't buy into this, he'll use somebody else. This was going to happen. But there's also some things that might not happen totally based on your decision. I go back to the mom and dad. Not every mom and dad pour eternal things into their kids. That's your choice. You choose that every day. You choose to opt out. So your opportunity to serve as a godly mom or a godly father or investing at work to the lost people around you, your decision, your response has eternal consequences. Brother Jerry, I mentioned, he spoke Saturday morning. And he mentioned the three days that Jonah was in the belly of the whale was three days he was supposed to be in Jonah. And in those three days, a lot of people died. Because one man said, nope, I ain't going there. So there's consequences when I delay what God wants me to do. When I postpone what I know I've been biblically commanded to do. So again, it's super important how you and I respond to the stuff we know we're supposed to be doing. 